In this video, we're going to put together the big parts of the lathe, the big iron parts. We're going to use this chain hoist. This stuff is really heavy, so be careful. It reminds me a little bit of loading torpedoes 40 years ago. Great fun. Underneath motor drive, the bell, the big leg, the bed of the lathe, probably 400 pounds, chip pan or the oil pan, and the uh, short oil pan leg, and then the legs. This stuff is kind of scattered all over my shop right now. I'm looking forward to getting it all in one spot. This is the bed. It's upside down in this photograph. There's the back legs. And the chip pan. This is the short leg. Now, the first problem I found was that this motor assembly will not fit in that hole. The motor will or the cone pulley will, but not both. But they will fit in the hole underneath it. So, we're going to chain hoist this thing, the bell up. And then we're going to slide the motor assembly underneath it, and then we're going to drop it down on top. This assembly weighs about 80 pounds or so, and I'm having a little trouble sliding it, but it works pretty good. When I was lowering the bell, I didn't notice that it did about a quarter of a turn. So I had to raise it back up again and then turn it. But it actually worked pretty good. It would have been a lot harder to turn the motor drive inside the bell. Now we've got the chain hoist hooked to the motor drive and we're pulling it up. You can see the shaft that I'm pulling out. We're going to connect that to the motor drive. So up it goes. Once it got close, then I just had to keep jostling it and pulling it up and getting it positioned so these uh, holes all lined up and I could drive the shaft in. This would have gotten a lot faster with a bigger hammer, but when you use a rubber hammer, it takes a little longer, but you're pretty sure you're not going to hurt anything. There is a hole in the shaft to accept the set screw, and I've marked it here, so you got to make sure it's lined up with the set screw hole. The set screw itself is hard to get at. You're just going to have to trust me that I put it in correctly. This is the short leg, and there's not a lot of parts here. 
Um, there's two cast iron portions, lower and upper, I'm going to call them. I don't know what the real names are. It's got eight screws, eight holes, obviously. They've got a couple of pins and a shaft. These pins uh, go on either side of the lower section and they push against a cast iron flange in the upper section that moves the tailstock end of the lathe very slightly to keep the bed in alignment. I kind of put grease everywhere there's no paint. The shaft is what connects these two pieces together, the lower and the upper plates. The lower plate, the shaft is fixed. The lower plate is, is what you're looking at here on the top. Because this is upside down, the plate on the top, which is on the bottom here, is attached to the bed of the lathe and the bed of the lathe's weight is supported by the shaft. You can see these pins then can adjust this thing very slightly back and forth to these pins adjust the bed of the lathe very Set slightly. It Okay, we're going to turn it back the right way now. And you can see this thin plate bolts to the bottom of the lathe bed. And the lower plate, where these pins are, that's attached to the legs. So you get this very slight torque movement that you can make in the back of the bed. So you got four bolts that go up into the bed. And you got another fold four bolts that go down into the leg. You know what it occurred to me that this part is really hard to get at, and you've got to restore the lathe to get at it. So I just thought I'd leave a little note for the next guy 40, 50 years from now. You know, when I tried to attach this to the bottom of the bed, I realized that I attached that plate backwards. You can see here's how it was going to go, but you can see here it goes better. The hole's lined up, but now this thing's going to work better. So I had to take that shaft out, and you're going to wind up uh, seeing me put the shaft in twice. But all is good. These bolts you can't ever get at, so they really have to be tight. You don't want them coming out. Here's that lower section again. I'm going to drive that shaft in again. Here we are installing two flanges that support one end of the chip pan. It's pretty simple stuff. I've got to make this lathe mobile now and move it around a little bit because I have to use the chain hoist for the bed and then I've got to maneuver the bell in place. So now that the motor drive is up in there I can go ahead and put some wheels on it. So here we're just going to uh, lift the bed up. It probably weighs four or five hundred pounds. And line it up to the bell.
and bolt it down. A little more grease. Just make sure there's nothing in those mating surfaces. Four half inch bolts here. The right side legs are next, but they're kind of tippy and they fall over easy. So I'm going to have to figure out a different way here. What I came up with is to go ahead and put the wheels on, which I had to do anyway. And then I just put a couple 2x4s across that are just a little bit shorter than the wheels. So this actually worked pretty good. It still rolls, but it's not going to fall over. Without this thing, I'm sure I would have fell down. It would have fell down a couple of times trying to get the pan on and everything bolted up. Now I'm going to lift up the bed a little bit to give room for that pan because the chip pan fits between the short leg and the legs. More grease. And one last look at my graffiti before I seal it up. Oil pan is next. Like I said before, it gets squeezed between the bed and the legs. These are the last bolts from my bag that held, had all the bolts for the bed. We'll just slide these in temporary. These are the last bolts for the short leg as well. Lower it down, get it lined up. Then we're done. done with the big iron. That was a fun day.